If the door is open, then I must close it. The door is open, therefore I must close it. That seemed like a, a valid argument. This takes the form P implies Q, which says if P happens, then we know Q is going to happen. And then it says P does happen, so therefore we can conclude that Q happened. This is a common argument form, along with several other common argument forms that are always valid. And the common ones have names. This one, where P implies Q and P therefore Q is called modus ponens. This one, where we have P implies Q, but Q doesn't happen, therefore P couldn't have happened, is called modus tollens. For this one, disjunctive syllogism, P or Q are going to happen, but P doesn't happen, so therefore it must have been that Q happened, because the only way a P or Q could be true is if at least one of them did happen. So this is called a disjunctive syllogism because disjunctions are or statements. And then my personal favorite, reasoning by transitivity. If you know P implies Q, P causes Q to happen, and you know Q causes R to happen, then P must also cause R to happen. It's like a chain reaction. E makes Q happen, which makes R happen. So we say P must make R happen. So these are common argument forms where you could, instead of constructing a truth table, say, oh, this fits the pattern of modus ponens, or this fits the pattern of disjunctive syllogism. So therefore, the argument must be valid. There are also some very common reasoning errors that people make that are invalid argument forms that happen a lot. For example, P implies Q. Q happens, therefore P happens. That's incorrect. So that's called the fallacy or invalid argument, the fallacy of the converse. Why is it the fallacy of the converse? Well, remember that when you have the original conditional statement P implies Q, the converse of that is Q implies P. And what we have here is if we assume P implies Q and then we uh, see that Q has happened, we incorrectly assume that that means P must have happened. So based on this, we conclude this must also be true, which is not the case. Fallacy of the inverse, well, you remember what inverse was about. P implies Q, if that's your conditional statement, the inverse is the one that changes the signs. Somebody might think that when P implies Q, that not P also implies not Q, but these are really not equivalent. If P implies Q and you know P didn't happen, you cannot conclude that Q didn't happen. So they call that the fallacy of the inverse. So here's an example from my math lab. Decide whether the argument is valid or a fallacy and give the form that applies. In this type of problem, all we have to do is put it into P's and Q's and then pick which one of the forms it matches up with. So it says, if the music is good, then I stay. I stay, therefore the music is good. So if the music is good, then I stay. So let's let P be the statement, music is good, and let Q be the statement, I stay. What would we have here? If the music is good, then I stay would be P implies Q. I stay would be just Q. Therefore, the music is good is just P. Is this one of the valid argument forms or an invalid one? Where did we see that argument form before? We saw it right here. P implies Q, Q happens, therefore P must have happened. That is actually an invalid argument form. Remember, just because P implies Q does not mean that Q implies P. So it's actually invalid. Think about it this way. If the music is good, then I stay. I stay. Does that necessarily mean the music was good? No, because I didn't say whether or not I'd stay if the music wasn't good, right? possible that I'm going to stay no matter what. So you can't necessarily conclude that the music is good.